Hey everyone, today we're looking at this question again of if the characters actually enjoy the trials. This time around, looking at the characters unlockable through outfits, also known as costume characters. These characters all have very different motivations, which will ultimately change whether they really want to be here or not, and if they're even enjoying their time here. Straight up not having a good time. William Birkin is a character who appears to be in a lot of pain in his mutated form. Some of his voice lines have him say things like, help me, which gives us a good idea of how he's feeling. He does seem motivated to catch the survivors, but it doesn't seem to be out of actually wanting to. It's quite possible the entity drives him to do the trials by promising him that he'll be saved from his mutation if he complies, which would make his participation make more sense. Overall, I think he's in a lot of pain and by and large does not enjoy the trials and is likely doing them simply because the alternate of disobeying the entity is worse than his current painful mutation. Does not enjoy the rest. Realm. The Xenomorph Queen, much like the regular Xenomorph, I think is probably going to be fairly unopinionated on the trials, but rather doing them for the purpose of allowing its race to survive, which is the main Xenomorph goal. The Xenomorph Queen is the leader of a Xenomorph group, and so in this case it would probably feel more responsible to abide by the entity's rules in order to ensure survival. This could potentially sway it into not enjoying the trials. The different shrieks and such from the Xenomorphs do definitely suggests that they're not having a blast, and are likely irritated by things like the pallets and flashlights, not understanding how this realm works and its strange rules. I also read that they typically don't get placed into combat situations, the queen that is, and so potentially in the realm it needing to do this would irritate the queen further, a sort of Thanos I'll do it myself situation. The queens are also generally considered more intelligent, and so being in the realm I do tend to think these irritations, and the failures of its inferiors would annoy it. Before we go any further though, I'd like to talk to you about G Fuel. G Fuel is game-changing energy. I personally find G Fuel useful when playing games, but also when editing to help me keep my focus. G Fuel comes in tubs and cans, and in a variety of over 50 different flavors, many of these even coming from some of your favorite horror IPs. So there's something you'll surely love. You can click my affiliate link below or use code ASI over at gfuel.com for 20% off of your order today. Have little to no opinion. The Jabberwock is a creature from the Alice in Wonderland books. It appears to just basically be a strange creature, and so I sort of think it belongs here, as it's a bit like the Demogorgon, just sort of doing its thing outside of any desire to be evil or any enjoyment of what it does. It's just a monster. The Birch is technically just an outfit for the hag, but I thought I'd include it still for the sake of it. The Crypt TV wiki describes her as a nature demon, who protects the forest and is summoned when someone breaks one of their birch symbols. I'm not too sure though if it enjoys what it does. In the Protector short film, it's made out more like it's doing its job of protecting the forest and those who call on it. In that sense, I think it's probably in the area of being unopinionated, instead doing its duty, regardless of emotion or a like or dislike for it. In regards to the realm, much of it is forested, so maybe it views it almost like the survivors are disturbing its grounds, and their Therefore, will serve the entity as their goals align. As the birch is a skin for the hag, who also draws symbols and has them disturbed to teleport to them, it all kind of makes sense in that way. Hunk is an employee of Umbrella, the evil corporation of the Resident Evil universe, responsible for most of the bad things that happen. He's known for how relentless and ruthless he is and how he always seems to survive against all odds, earning himself the name the Grim Reaper. The name Hunk actually stands for Human Unit Never Killed. I tend to think he's mostly meant to be a faceless character who causes destruction, and so he probably just sees this all as his duty, and his new objective giver, the Entity. I do think there's some enjoyment though, after all, surely you can't cause so much destruction and violence if you don't like it in some twisted way. So I'm placing him sort of between this no opinion tier and mostly enjoying tier. He could reasonably be in both, depending on your perspective. The Mordeo is also a demon apparently, and a very territorial of their wood, much like Huntress. 
although in this case there's multiple. The creature seems pretty much based on a Wendigo, having many similar features. Based on their placement in the realm, we can assume they're only hunting the survivors as they view it as their territory. Therefore, I don't think they would have any enjoyment necessarily. I think it's more of an animalistic thing again, where they don't have much of an opinion, especially if they just view them as trespassers, they simply want to get them away. Maybe some degree of enjoyment here though, with some flavour text sort of suggesting this. Mostly enjoying their time. The Krampus is a creature that scares people who have misbehaved and comes to scare them during the winter. In cases where they're especially bad, he's said to take them to the underworld, or in some cases, just straight up eat them. Pretty evil guy. With him not being against taking them to the underworld too, which seems sort of extreme by the way, I certainly don't think he has any issues with the realm, with it sort of being an equivalent in many ways. It's more than likely that he's been lied to by the entity and told the survivors were bad or deserved of it essentially. I would say he's somewhere between unopinionated, as he's sort of just doing his job and liking it, because it seems he sort of enjoys this kind of stuff if he's actually gone along and joined the realm. So, unsure where to place him. He could maybe drift between these tiers of unopinionated and liking the realm. The ferryman appears to be the ferryman of the underworld from Greek mythology, Charon. The ferryman is often presented as unopinionated, with his role simply being to take the dead souls across the river Styx in his boat. From what I could find, it seems he was relatively bored most of the time, due to his job being to sail back and forth across the river for eternity. It was only when extreme things happened when he got some excitement. Therefore, I kind of think in the realm with his new role as a killer, he'd probably be enjoying it considering he's not left to endlessly sail in the monotony of the underworld. Bear in mind too that he was in the part where it was essentially a purgatory or void type of thing like DBD's void. If people who came to him didn't have their burial coin, they were left to just wander the emptiness. So the excitement of the realm would likely be appealing to him despite some of the annoyances and such. I'm not sure about how much he would agree with what's happening, and especially the entity's control over the realm, but regardless I think the shift from monotony would honestly be enough for him to mostly enjoy it. The Minotaur is sort of based on the general myth it seems. If we draw from the Greek myth of Theseus and the Minotaur, we can sort of figure that the Minotaur is mostly doing what it does out of anger. The Minotaur is the child of both King Minos' wife and a bull sent by Poseidon. Upon the Minotaur being born, it was locked away in a labyrinth on the island of Crete. Crete then demanded Athens give them seven men and women periodically. One of these men is Theseus, son of the King of Athens who goes to Crete and kills the Minotaur. The Minotaur may physically appear as a monster, but it isn't really one and is only so angry and vicious due to it being abandoned and locked away in the cold and dark labyrinth. Now in the realm, maybe it'd like it a bit, because it finally gets to leave the labyrinth and let out all of its stored up anger, which translates well when placed onto Oni's power. It's sort of a Billy situation, I think, where he could have been peaceful, but ultimately his circumstances and up bringing resulted in him forming a lot of anger and violent tendencies, with now little need to hold back. Undead Knight I've included here too, as it's technically one of the ultra rare sets. It does seem to be Tahoe still based on the cosmetics, but he's undeniably changed. The wiki identifies him as a Draugr, so that's what I'm going to be going on. A Draugr is essentially an undead person, in this case Tahos with the flavour text mentioning that something in the realm resulted in him coming back from the brink of death. Draugr Tahos definitely seems to be on the evil side of things. Draugr is said to cause a lot of chaos basically, and enjoy doing so, with them often being the undead of people who were bad in their life too. Tahos was a pretty terrible person, and now in his undead form, I think his desire to cause destruction will only increase, leading to some enjoyment. The only takeaway may be that he's in a zombie-like body, which may not feel the best, and so lower his enjoyment somewhat too, but I think he belongs in this tier regardless. The Baba Yaga is a character from folklore who lives in the forest in a house with chicken legs. She hunts down victims, steals them, and occasionally cooks them, similar to the Huntress which she's a skin for. She is often noted to be helpful, and other times violent and unhelpful, having a cooler side and a harsher side, again a bit like the Huntress. In the realm, 
found the Baba Yaga has a bit less freedom, not having its chicken leg house or its ability to fly, which it probably isn't the happiest about. On the other hand, it gets to cause a lot of chaos, and based on the humming, definitely seems perfectly content with its situation, so I tend to lean more toward the enjoyment side. The Chatterer, I think, will essentially act the same as the Cenobite, with him having pretty much the same motives as a Cenobite also. The Cenobites seek pleasure and pain, and I sort of think in the realm they definitely get a lot of pain, but maybe not quite the same level of pleasure. I do think they enjoy the realm and choose to stick around, but I don't think they're quite in that top tier. Regardless, it works out well for them, with them able to still send people to the labyrinth and have them interact with the box. Having a lot of fun. Tiffany Valentine is a character who's been through a few different stages when it comes to her opinion on violence. I believe the version we have in game is her taken from Bride of Chucky though, so she's still very much into violence at that point, and I would say is in this top tier, although on the lower end. She definitely likes violence, but she also tends to get Chucky to do most of it for her, giving him hints and suggestions on how to do things, and only doing them herself when necessary. She's the mastermind behind most of Chucky's attacks in the film. In Seed of Chucky, she has sort of a crisis and attempts to stop her addiction to killing, but ultimately fails multiple times. Again though, seeing as it doesn't seem to be that version of her in the realm, I think overall, based on her voice lines too, she's enjoying the realm. I don't know much about Attack on Titan, but from what I've been told and the research I've done, it sort of seems like both the Warhammer Titan and the Armored Titan are pretty unopinionated on what they're doing, acting in sort of the animalistic way I've described for some of the other characters. With that said, they do seem to be enjoying it, not being completely mindless, especially in the case of these two titans who I believe have a slightly higher intelligence. The titans like to chomp people, and even here in the realm, the armoured titan in particular is straight up grinning, so I think I'm placing them into the area of enjoyment, although there's a definite argument for unopinionated, especially toward the survivors of the realm. The Luxie is a Crypt TV character and acts sort of like Pyramid Head to my understanding, but instead in relation to grief, scaring a person into moving on or subsequently killing them, or taking a body part I think. Although apparently this isn't a fixed rule for its appearance. From what I gathered too, the Luxie does definitely have emotions. In the realm I think it'd probably enjoy it. After all, the realm is full of people who will be feeling grief in some way. Almost every survivor probably grieves their old life. So this evil creature that targets people who hold on to grief probably loves it here. Also, I mean, just look at that big grin. Naughty Bear off the bat, I think, is most definitely having some fun. The main thing we have to go off of is his facial expressions, which often look quite happy, especially during moments like his Mori, which is quite telling. Other than this, the narrator he has with him seems to often make out that he's having a good time, or puts violence in a positive spin, making me think he's probably enjoying himself here. I do hope you enjoyed, thanks, and goodbye.